Chapter 2 The Age of Revolutions An event which brings about a radical change in human life is called a revolution. The American War of Independence, the French Revolution and the Industrial Revolution were events that brought about such changes. The 18th century in which these events took place is therefore known as the Age of Revolutions. We shall briefly study these three events in this lesson. The American War of Independence After the discovery of the continent of America, people from many countries of Europe went and settled there permanently. The British founded 13 colonies in North America between 1607 AD and 1733 AD. England's Policy About the Colonies The government of England began to administer these colonies in North America. The rulers of England expected the colonies to sell their grains, tobacco, sugar, etc. to England. The colonies in America were forbidden to produce any goods which could compete with the British goods. England levied duties in the colonies on goods such as tea and sugar. The growing discontent against England in the colonies. The colonists desired to get rid of the burdensome restrictions imposed on them by England. They united under the leadership of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and revolted against England. Boston Tea Party The colonists demanded that England should remove all restrictions imposed on them and allow them to govern their colonies on their own. England refused to grant these demands. The colonists, therefore, boycotted British goods. Some colonists threw away tea chests from the English ships into the sea. This incident is known as the Boston Tea Party. No representation, no taxes. The American colonies had no representation in the Parliament of England. They, therefore, took a clear stand that the Parliament of England had no right to enact laws applicable to the colonies and had no right to impose taxes on them. They declared, no taxation without representation. The government of England turned down the colonists' demands. This led to a war between England on the one hand and the colonies on the other. George Washington led the army of the colonies. Declaration of Independence the colonies issued the Declaration of Independence on 4th July 1776. Thomas Jefferson played an important part in drawing up its draft. The Declaration set forth its principles that all men are created equal, life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness are the unalienable rights of man, and people have a right to change or abolish any government which tries to destroy these rights. The colonies won the War of Independence. In 1783, England acknowledged their independence. George Washington became the first president of America. In 1789, 13 colonies together established the Federal Republic of America. It came to be known as the United States of America or the USA in short. America thus became the first federal democratic republic. America was the first country in the world to have a written constitution. The American War of Independence provided inspiration to the revolutionaries in France. Also, it proved to be a source of inspiration to the anti-colonial struggles in the world in the 19th and the 20th centuries. The French Revolution France had an absolute monarchy. The people there became united and they put an end to the autocracy and feudalism there. It was the first time in the world that the people's power had expressed itself in this manner. Today, we find that many nations of the world have embraced democracy. The spread of this democratic form of government began with the French Revolution. Therefore, it is believed that the history of the modern world begins with the French Revolution. The ruling class in France lived a life of luxury and indulgence. They were unmindful of the developments taking place in the outside world. They did not do anything for the welfare of the people. 
the state had become bankrupt. The people, therefore, began to lose their loyalty towards the king. Social Inequality There was extreme social inequality in France. There were three social orders or estates in France. The first was that of the higher clergy and the second was that of the nobility. The two together were negligible in number considering the total population of France, but they owned nearly 80% of the nation's land. They also enjoyed many privileges. They lived luxuriously. The third estate consisted of merchants, lawyers, doctors, teachers, farmers, workers and serfs, etc. Although their income was much less, they bore the brunt of all taxes. There was extreme social and economic inequality between the first two higher estates and the third estate. It was the third estate that struck at this inequality. The French thinkers Montesquieu, Voltaire and Rousseau put forth new ideas. Montesquieu put forth the theory of the separation of the powers according to which the three components of the government machinery, the legislative, the executive and the judiciary, should be independent of one another. Voltaire severely criticized the social inequality. Rousseau put forth his theory of the sovereignty of the people through his book Social Contract. According to him, man is born free. People voluntarily impose upon themselves certain restrictions so that the society may function smoothly. They create the government machinery for the implementation of these restrictions. It is not divine or God-given, but is created through a social contract. If this contract is broken by the rulers, people have a natural and moral right to overthrow such rulers. For these ideas of Rousseau, he is regarded as the father of the French Revolution. The French thinkers gave importance to the idea of the liberty of an individual. They opposed blind faith. They considered the development of new industries as essential. These new ideas spread everywhere in France, giving momentum to the French Revolution. The Fall of Bastille As the hardships of the common people went on increasing, their discontent too reached the climax and the revolution broke out. The enraged people stormed the prison of Bastille on 14 July 1789. The fort of Bastille was a symbol of despotism and injustice. The storming of the Bastille was a severe blow that the common people dealt to the autocratic rulers. The Declaration of Human Rights The revolutionaries issued the Declaration of the Rights of Man. It proclaimed that liberty, security of life and property, and the right to resist injustice are the fundamental rights of man. The furious masses overthrew the feudal system in France. Louis the Sixteenth, the King of France, was beheaded and people established their rule. The French Revolution gave the world the valuable principles of liberty, equality and fraternity. It established the principle of people's sovereignty. This revolution proved to be a source of inspiration throughout the world in the fight against despotism and in the struggles of the enslaved nations. Therefore, the French Revolution is regarded as a very important event in the history of man. The Industrial Revolution In Europe, revolutionary changes began to take place in the field of industry in the latter half of the 18th century. Goods began to be produced with the help of machines powered by steam. Later on, electricity came to be used. Factories replaced cottage industries. Handlooms were replaced by power looms. New means of transport such as railways and steamboats were introduced. It was the dawn of the age of machines. This industrial revolution started in England first and then it gradually spread to other parts of the Western world. The industrial prosperity of England was so great that England came to be described as the workshop of the world. Effects of the Industrial Revolution The Industrial Revolution gave momentum to Europe's economic progress. 
the volume of production of a variety of goods increased. Internal and international trade expanded. The advancements in the means of transport and communication led to the growth of trade. The factory system of production led to tremendous increase in the production of goods. Employment opportunities too increased considerably. This in its turn led to an increase in the purchasing power of the common people. The availability of a variety of goods at cheaper rates enormously helped improve the standard of living of the common man. The need to secure new markets in the international field was then felt increasingly. With the help of surplus capital, modern machinery and a well-equipped military force, the European nations began to expand their empires in Asia and Africa. As a result, the undeveloped countries lost their freedom. They just became assured markets supplying raw material to the imperial powers. India too was a victim of this process. The Industrial Revolution led to the growth of towns and cities. There, the educated society grew in number. They became conscious of their rights. This helped the development of democracy in countries like England and France. New cities rose in Europe. The traditional occupations vanished. Villages were deserted. People began to throng the industrial cities. Thousands of workers lived in filthy slums. Lack of cleanliness led to the spread of diseases. The workers had to live a wretched life. In the industrialized nations, there began movements against this political and social inequality brought in by the economic inequality. The conflict between the industrialists and the workers' organizations grew. Workers' movements and women's movements for equal rights began in the European nations. These movements strengthened the idea of a welfare state. The standard of living of the common people improved. The life of the common man found expression also in the cultural field. New literary forms like short stories and novels evolved. The life of a common man became a subject of art and paintings. Later on in the 20th century, Technological progress led to the development of the cinema. The joint family system began to decline. Traditionalism and blind faith began to lose their sway. It helped the spread of rationalism. But at the same time, wealth became the measure of man's success. Man became materialistic in his outlook. Human life became mechanical. <laughs>